Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of Blue Monkey Forensics. In this video, we will be solving the cipher questions from the Magnet User Summit Capture the Flag contest held in May 2023. The cipher series of questions are all about decoding messages and files. For this video, I'm going to be using mostly two main tools as recommended by my CTF idol, Kevin Pagano, which are decode.fr and then Cyberchef. Decode is especially useful as they have a cipher identifier feature which will help you narrow down the gazillions of different ciphers that are out there. You can access that at decode.fr. Cyberchef gives you ready access to tons of decryption and decoding algorithms in addition to other tools which are really useful for forensics like hashing, date and time conversion, etc. You can access Cyberchef online at icybershef.com or you can download the tool and then run it natively on your own machine. Let's get started. Question one, salads are for the chumps. All right, I've done a few of these CTFs and every time they mention salad, there's probably a Caesar encoding involved. So I head over to decode.fr and then select the Caesar cipher. And then I paste in the encoded message. And you can see here that I left the default decrypt on the brute force. And then at the top of the list is something that makes sense and hence the flag for question number one. It's me, Mario. Question two, typing out all these questions. And we are given the clue of this gibberish set of letters. And this took me a while to figure out how to start. Staring at that clue, I saw the words finger and shift. So I figured that's got to be something. So I typed in finger into the search for a toolbox for decode and took a look around and there wasn't really anything interesting here. Then I typed in shift, which came back with a good number of possibilities. The first one is shift cipher, which I clicked into and it didn't look like anything fit here. And then I tried the keyboard shift. And I love tools that have automatic detection. So I just hit decrypt. And the very first item that comes back with something that makes sense is the key. And I tried it and it worked. So basically the flag is, this is the flag. All in lowercase and no spaces. Question three. The Earth's rotation really makes my day. So once again, we're given a bunch of alphanumeric characters and punctuation symbols. And reading the clue again, I keyed off the words earth and rotation. In the Deco website, I typed in the word earth and did not see anything that would be of interest. Then I typed in ROT because I know there are rotation ciphers and I chose the ROT cipher. Once again, just using the default settings, we get the top result that come back with what's the password without the letter A. Question four, I like the trailer for this movie. Can't wait to see it in theaters. And then there is a JPEG file for download. So after downloading the JPEG and taking a look at it, it looks like a movie poster for the Puss in Boots movie. The word trailer triggered as a keyword in my brain, so I decided to check out the hex dump of the file. In my Linux terminal, I did a XXD on the JPEG file and taking a look at it, scanning down to see if there's anything interesting. Starts off with FFD8, which is the header for JPEG, so that looks normal. And as I go through the file, get all the way to the end, and I notice that it does not end with FFD9, which is usually the footer or trailer for a JPEG file. So I'm kind of scanning back a few lines, and I do see the FFD9 signature just before the hex offset of 921B. So I use the DD command to read in the uh, movie.jpg file. And then I'm going to set the block size to 1. And then I'm going to skip 921B worth of characters. And I'm going to use the bash command line to help me with the math of converting hex to decimal. Otherwise, I would just basically have to use uh, external calculator. Uh, the syntax is dollar open parentheses, open parentheses, and then 16 pound. 
and then put in my hex value of 921B and then end the two parentheses. And then lastly, I'm gonna write out the output to a new file named trailer.bin. And looking at the resulting file, I see that the last two characters are equal equal, which from my experience means that the data is a base64 encoded data set. So I use the base64 decoder. So type in base64 dash dash decode dash I trailer.bin and I get the output of this is not an endorsement of the movie Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. And so that's the flag. Question five. Sometimes it's nice to just stop working and search the internet for good memes. And once again, there is a JPEG attached to this for download. So after looking at the JPEG, it's yet another cat picture. Um, so nothing of interest here. And looking at the clue, I noticed that the capital letters in the clue are S-T-E-G-H-I-D-E. -E. And I know that this is a tool used to hide and review data within JPEGs and BMP files and WAV files and .au files. You can download the code as steghide.sorgeforge.net. They have a Windows version and they also have the RPM package for Linux. Since I'm using the Kane Linux distro on a daily basis, I'm lucky that Steghide is already available on that distro. So I go to my Kane box and I just type in Steghide extract dash SF to look at the file and then read in challenge.jpg. And the program asks for a passphrase, which I didn't have. So I just hit enter. And lucky enough, the resulting file is named message.txt and looking at the file, I see that the flag is 11 is more than 10. Question six, as long as more than zero people enjoy these challenges, I'd be happy with that. So the clue basically says, I really enjoy the Blue Monkey Forensics video on the last cipher questions. If you enjoy these challenges, let us know. Hey look, I got a plug about my videos. Thanks Jessica and friends. Like most people, I thought, oh, I got to go watch one of the old videos and um, see if there is a clue in there. But after rereading the clue again, I noticed the capitalized words is basically zero and width. Zero width is basically a non-printing character, which is commonly used in computerized typesetting for some complex languages like Arabic and Japanese and so forth. And it is also used in steganography to hide information amongst plain visible text. And this technique involves converting plain text into binary data, then converting the binary data into a string of zero width characters, which are essentially not displayed on the screen. And for this question, I'm gonna use an online revealer at https colon slash slash neatnick.net slash steganographer. So I copied in the clue of I enjoyed the Blue Monkey Forensics video on the last Cypher questions. If you enjoy these challenges, let us know. And pasted that into the public message box. And then I hit D steganographize. And voila, I get the flag. This is the full flag in pseudo leet speak. Question seven. People online keep telling me my style sucks. And then there is yet another cat file to download. Anyway, once again, I looked at the clue and what struck me was the capital letters OSS. -S, and that actually didn't make any sense to me even after Googling OSS and steganography. Then I tried to Google style sucks, which brought me to the page for steganography online. From here, I clicked on the decode tab, and then I clicked on choose file to bring in the cat2.png file, and it revealed the hidden message, which says, you have made it, mate. Good luck. Question eight, rapidly making my way through the machete order. 
The clue is a string of alphanumerics ending in an equal sign. And once again, that is usually an indication of base64 encoded data. So I just copy and paste that into CyberChef and use the base64 decoder. And I get the key, which says, if you only knew the power of the dark side from Empire Strikes Back. So I had no idea that the Machete Order referred to a method of watching the Star Wars series. And here's a good explanation from Pat Oswald of what the Machete Order is. Yeah. Okay, here's what you do. You watch Star Wars and Empire. When Empire ends, it's that cliffhanger. He just found out Darth is his dad. Oh, I thought we didn't spoil that. That's <laughs> um, then you watch episode two, okay. Attack of the Clones. Now what you, and you, you, don't, you do not watch episode one. That just doesn't exist. Don't okay. Delhi doesn't exist. And you watch episode two where you see uh, Darth Vader as a teenager. Right. Basically going through Luke's whole thing. Yeah. Except whereas Luke is trying to become good, he falls into evil. Right. So you watch uh, episode two and three. At the end of three, he's become Darth Vader. Then you watch episode six, Return of the Jedi, when Luke then redeems him and rescues his dad. There you and go. And it becomes this amazing emotional journey. It's a great, it's called The Machete Order. <laughs> I didn't make it up, it's online. Question nine. Sometimes I wish we could visualize music. And for this one, there is a WAV file to download. And so, uh, of course, the first thing I did was to listen to the WAV file, and bam, I got Rick Roll. I listened to the rest of the WAV file, but did not hear any audio clues. So I opened VLC and used the audio visualizations and then played around with the different choices. And the one that was of interest was scope. And so that I noticed the left channel of the file only had a short segment of data in the very beginning while the right channel was the full Rick Astley experience. So then I use FFmpeg to separate the file into a left channel file. So FFmpeg I message dot wave dash AF double quote pan equals one pipe C zero equals C zero and double quote left dot wave. So what this does is basically it takes in the uh, wave file and all it does is spits out the audio stream and I'm only looking at the left channel. If you want the right channel, it would be C1 equals C1. All right, and then I used FF play to play the resulting file. So FF play left dot wave. And uh, you can see that a flag was displayed. So clearly you can hide text within a audio file. Question 10, whiterose.mv4. And there was a uh, .flac audio file to download. And once again, the first thing I did was to listen to the audio file. I already got Rickrolled earlier, so what's the worst that can happen? And it sounds like it's some Japanese anime soundtrack and there's nothing really unusual about the file. So I googled the clue of White Rose, which was from an episode of Mr. Robot. Uh, apparently the character Elliot embedded encrypted information in audio files, which he then burned to CDs. Yeah, that wasn't that long ago uh, that people still use CDs for music. How fast things change. And a program named Deep Sound 2.0 was mentioned as being used in Mr. Robot. It only had a Windows version, so I used my Windows machine to analyze the FLAC file. So I downloaded the Deep Sound uh, program and then launched it. And then just opened up the FLAC file within Deep Sound. And the program revealed that there is a file named topsecretfile.txt within it. And opening that file, we see the contents, which is the flag. Wow, you found another flag. Keep up the great work. So here we see that this is another method of hiding a text file instead of just text in a audio file. Question 11, Cobalt Strike, a necessary evil? 
And then the clue is a stream of alphanumeric characters ending with the double equal sign. So I know this is a job for Base64 decode. So feeding that into CyberChef and using the Base64 decode, use something that looks like a PowerShell script. This is where I got stuck as I wasn't sure if I was supposed to run this PowerShell script on my Windows machine. I stared at the PowerShell code for an hour trying to figure out what it's doing without running it. It just seemed a little risky considering that there is actual encoded information here that I have no idea what it does. So after a few hours, I decided to give up on reading the code and then just consult the great Google. I looked for a COBOL strike in PowerShell, and I came across a website that analyzed the COBOL strike PowerShell payloads, which is this section here. And one of the things that I was missing was that you need to perform a binary XOR with a key of 35 to decrypt that blob. So within CyberChef, I copied out that blob and started with the from space 64 formula and then I added the XOR function with the key of 35 in binary. And if you look at the very bottom of the result, I can see some legible text, which is the flag of you found the C2. All right, so those were my methods for solving the cipher portion for the May 2023 Magnet CTF. The CTF had a few questions on encoding, which were solved by CyberChef or Decode. This CTF also had a few questions involving steganography in text, pictures, and audio files. So specific programs were used to break out the hidden messages. Hope this was useful to you. For more videos on Capture the Flag walkthroughs, watch these videos here. Make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.